Welcome back, my fellow makers and foam fanatics. In today's episode, we're going to be painting a cyberpunk mask. I know what you're thinking. Hey, where can I get one of these? As a matter of fact, you can. I'll have this linked below the video, along with the, all the other supplies I'll be using to paint this mask. Uh, this was inspired by the video game Cyberpunk, which is coming out. Uh, it's super awesome. My friend Nick and Modulus Props made this. I bought this a while back with the intention of doing this on stream. As a matter of fact, this video came from my live stream I do on Twitch dot tv slash evil ted smith every other monday and tuesday from 9 a.m to 11 a.m pacific standard time and if you guys are ready let's get started there it is this is such a beautiful design i love it uh as you're looking at it, i want it to be a dark metallic um which i have today we're going to be using the tamaya dark metallic gray but i like the um the lenses uh and around the uh, mask i would like these to stay black and so instead of just painting everything and painting it black, this is already black. So let's go ahead and mask off the rings of the eyes. And these uh, like air cartridges or filters, we're gonna paint these guys. We're gonna mask these off and keep these black. Now I know you're looking at this mask, you notice this bright kind of shiny sheen to it. That's because ahead of time, I went ahead and sealed it with a uh, Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. This stuff is wonderful because it's designed for like bumpers of cars. It's for automotive stuff that's flexible. And because it says right here, works on plastic. It just helps make paint stick better. And we'll be doing some, uh, we have some Tamiya tape, which is perfect for masking. Now with this thinner tape, we're definitely concentrating just on the edges right now. Frog tape, which technically is almost like um, the Tamiya tape, but just a broader piece of it. A little bit wider strips, but it works very much the same. See when you do this right on top, right? I'm just gonna cut off what I don't need. Now, before we start painting, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put on some cardboard. Keep my table, <laughs> my table space clean somewhat. And we're gonna load up the airbrush with my uh, metallic gray. Before painting, don't forget to wear your mask. When painting, I always like to start with the back side first. All right. Let me give it a once over, make sure I got everything. Oh yeah. See, see a spot I missed already underneath here. That's dry, so let's go ahead. Let's do some demasking, shall we? My favorite part. Oh, <laughs> oh. That looks cool. Um, okay, with that done, let's go ahead. And with our plat effects, we're gonna do the dark metallic. Let's go and paint these guys. Um, I like it. Unfortunately, the metallic is just the same color as the base, but with the plat effects paint, I'm going to add a little bit of black to it and just make it a darker metallic. I get these small mixing cups and I love these because I used to just to mix stuff on the uh, cardboard itself. But then what would happen was I would move my part into it, put my hand in it and get paint everywhere. So I just started doing uh, little cups. There we go. Yeah, this looks great. Um, much better now. Uh, on the rivets, I like this. I'm gonna make this um, like a dull aluminum, like a rivet. Um, let's go ahead and paint the inside of that black first. With this dry, before I do the um, dull aluminum on there, I just realized I like this piece here. Let's go ahead and paint that the same dark metallic we have on these side pieces right here. Right now it's dry, we can go ahead and take the Tamiya flat aluminum. We're gonna paint the rivets here. Fantastic, come together. Now we're going to add some additional details with some vinyl. Um, I like these uh, the cylinders here. So I had some in my supplies. This is uh, just a vinyl and it had a brushed aluminum look on it, a brushed aluminum vinyl. So I went ahead and cut out two circles 
and I can see the brush loom and see which direction it's going. So make sure I put in the same direction. But I'm gonna peel these guys off and stick them on here. So peel off the vinyl from the backing, which is kind of tricky. Now, the vinyl is going, although we'll have that facing forward. You can see there's a bit of, there's some lines to it. So I'm gonna place that one right here. Right smack down at the center here. And of course, the vinyl is adhesive back, so you just kind of burnish it down. Wow. Look at that. Looking great. There's some additional things I want to do. Uh, the same technique I did here on these guys, there's these holes here. Now, granted, we could probably go in and paint them, but they won't look as crisp or clean. So um, my plan is I have some uh, some vinyl, black vinyl, and a little piece of brass tubing. Uh, hold on, it's too big, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna work. I wonder if I have any smaller tubing. Because my plan would be cut some little black circles out of vinyl and just put these guys in here. Because therefore they'll be nice and crisp and round and not painted. You paint them, my fears are not gonna look as good. The recesses and details are, I might do it with a brush. Well, apparently I don't have anything that small and brass tubing, but you know, I'm just gonna be very careful and use Effects black. Yeah, see, really, I love it. Just breaking up just a little bit. So we do the same thing here, guys, with the uh, these recesses. Again, he went to the trouble to sculpt the detail in there. You definitely want people to see it. So let's go ahead. When in doubt, black it out. All right. Yeah, see? Nice. All right, now it is dry. We're gonna do some attaching the straps, the back. We're gonna have some straps and I got some uh, webbing here. I'm going to glue on the back. Um, this is urethane, so if I find, I'm gonna use some uh, goop, but I definitely wanna rush up, rough up, rough up, <laughs> excuse me, try again. I definitely wanna rough up the smooth surface before I apply glue. Got a little bit of alcohol. I went ahead and pre-measured these webbing uh, straps for my head. Uh, the masking tape is to show me where I need to, how deep it needs to go. I like the press it in really good. As a matter of fact, I should put some gloves on. <laughs> now the gloves, I'm gonna go ahead and smear this stuff in a little bit more, push it hard. Have it seep out have it over the edges, push down, really good contact. If there's other glues out there that you know of that work just as well, please let me know in the comments. Because I've been working with Goop, and Goop's uh, a great way to glue straps to foam and urethane parts. But there is dry time. This takes at least eight hours to handle, see? But you need a good 24 hours of cure. As a matter of fact, I can't, I have to pin these guys in place because I don't want to leave them. Because once you place them, you don't want to move them <laughs> to stay in place. There you go, like that. Now again, the straight pins are just to make sure it stays positioned, doesn't move around on me while it's drying. So we go ahead and let that sit for at least eight hours. Okay, there it is, it's eight hours later and the straps are dry. These have been pinned with their goop. So the max mask portion is done. So we're going to focus on the eyes. All right, I cut out some uh, clear acrylic lenses for the eyes and a second set with holes for LEDs. My plan is I want these eyes to light up. So I went ahead and wired up, got some LEDs. These are white and I of course wired them up to a nine volt battery. And my plan is I'm going to uh, put the lens behind this. Uh, and I'm, I cut some two millimeter spacers that I'm going to glue and wrap around. This will be my spacer on the lens. I cut it to fit this back guy, right? I actually cut this lens in the back a little bit smaller. So this will sit on top like that. And um, it'll illuminate in the center and have these eyes glow. And, it, and here's the thing too, in theory, since these are clear, I'm gonna look out behind the eyeballs. So I'm gonna look out behind the lights. 
So what we're going to do first is the lenses on these guys. You can see there's a little bit of a lens, and it's yeah, like all LEDs. Um, and it, of course, makes the light very focused, and it's a dot. And I want to break that up. So what I'm going to do is I went ahead and just cut. I'm going to cut this off. Let's move on to these lenses because the plan is I went and got some Mylar. This is the stuff you put under windows and I'm sure there's probably some thinner stuff out there, but this is, um, I want the lenses to be like mirrored so you can't see in. Um, granted, this is a little bit thicker for the bigger windows, but I think this shouldn't work. Okay, I went ahead and got some uh, window cleaner. Let's do one lens here. Uh, I believe you wet this first. I don't have a squeegee. This one's going to kill the air bubbles out of it. Stop like this. The plan is to keep it really nice and flat, get all the air bubbles out of it. Instead of silent let it dry. Now let's go back to the lenses. Uh, the LEDs have little focus lenses on there, and when you light up, it just does a little beam. And uh, I like to just learn a little trick from a lighting friend of mine. His name, his name was Metal, and he said that what you do is you cut this lens off, and it will make just dis distribute the light a little bit better, so it's a little bit more scattered, a little pushed out, pushed to focus. Well, the lights now are working. We fixed that problem. Now we're gonna move on to our lenses here. This is where the LED is gonna be glued into. So I'm gonna wrap this guy. This is our standoff. See what I have an idea. Let's go ahead and glue these together first. And then slide the, the piece of plastic inside. All right, now they're dry, so gonna put them together. All right. In theory, these guys should slide right inside, right? There we go. That's our spacer there, right there. Very carefully with some uh, zap a gap. All right, while these are drying, let's trim up our mylar ones here. Ta da! Yeah. Wow, there it is. And there's our reflective lens. It's gonna go on top of this guy. Now this is actually, I'm gonna insert these inside the mask first and then glue these guys in behind. Let's pop our lens in. See if they snap in. Yeah, I cut them the size from the snap in and they snap in pretty good. All right, I'm having some issues with the Mylar sticking to my little windows. Every time I put it in, it kind of, you can see it bubbling up. So I am going to take some heat to it. And I found before I do that, I got my heat board and uh, I'm gonna take some heat. Uh, I'm not gonna use a heat gun, I'm gonna use a hair dryer. All right. Yeah, it does look, holy cow, this does appear to be working. All right, yeah, that's good. These lenses are in there, they're press fit right now, but the hot glue will hold them in place. Uh, to make sure these fit a little bit more flush, the edge of the foam, I'm going to take a rotary tool and I'm going to um, bevel the edges on the outside to make them a little bit sharper so they snug in better. All right, they're now been beveled and they fit a lot better. So you drop them right in here. They fit nice and snug. So our next step is to, we're going to go ahead and hot glue these guys in place. So I just realized, let me put a piece of fabric down because I'm moving my mask around. I don't want to scratch the paint job. There we go, okay. All right, I did a test fit. The clearance is great for my eyes. Now we're gonna put our LEDs in. I'm trying to think where's the most tension on one is to this guy here. It sits comfortably here. That. And that guy sits here like that, perfect. We'll make sure the, the bulb is nice and straight. And I'm going to do this with super glue. Now we're going to tuck these wires back a little bit and do a dab of hot glue right on it. One thing I want to still do 
is the LEDs. Like I said before, they're super bright. I need to facing forward, so I've taken some Tamiya flat black paint. Come back here and paint behind the lens. This helps minimize the blinding light in your eyeballs. And of course, eventually I'm going to <laughs> rig up a strap for this, but um, I'll probably end up doing um, a little piece of webbing that will um, we'll use some goop glue and it'll do a little bit of a strap that can slide my battery in and out. But uh, let's do a test fit, shall we? There it is, my finished cyberpunk mask. The lighting rig <laughs> actually worked out better than I expected. Happy accident, a lot of struggle and learning, but uh, I wanted to eyes the light up and it worked out well. Again, everybody, this cool mask you can get over at Modulus Props. I have a link for that below the video. And if you guys, it's your first time watching my channel, don't forget to subscribe and go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, where I have numerous patterns for cosplay building. And it's the holiday seasons. What you guys can do for me is shop through my Amazon link. It doesn't have to be cosplay stuff. It could be anything, shopping for family and getting gifts. Anything you shop through my Amazon link helps me keep making videos and buying my patterns and sharing this video with your friends. Guys, this has been awesome. This video you're watching right now is from my live stream I do on twitch.tv slash Smith every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anyway, guys, this was awesome. I'm going to go ahead now and go play some more Cyberpunk games. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you back next time right here on the Old Head Live.